Hi everyone. One focus this week is on academic honesty, and part of academic honesty is appropriate use of an outside source within the body of our paper. We call this in-text citation. So in order to use a source, we need to introduce that source, we need to make sure that we are consistently referring back to the author, and that we're also including the page number. We have a couple of other very integral aspects of using a source in the body of our paper. Uh, one of which is that if we are not quoting, if we are summarizing or paraphrasing, that we're not borrowing too much from the original or using the same word choice or phrasing as the original. So I'm going to go through just a couple of short paragraphs here that show some of these concepts. So the first paragraph that I've got for you guys actually does a lot of really good things. So I'll highlight some of the good things that are done and define terms as we go. And then we'll take a look at the second paragraph that doesn't do such a great job that has some items that are ready for revision. Okay, so our first sentence here, I'll highlight this. And let's go with bright yellow. Okay, so this first sentence has a title, an author name, and an overview of the content of the source. I call this type of sentence an overview sentence or a source introduction sentence. Whenever you pull from a source, you want to introduce it first to your reader. So this sentence reads, In the giant's heart, George MacDonald tells the story of two children and their encounter with the giant and his wife. Now, as we move forward, we want to refer back to just the author and just the author by his or her last name. So you'll see in this next sentence that we only have the author's last name present. But this is part of our attribution. We want to include the author's last name in the sentence, and we also want to include a verb of some kind, like writes, says, reports, uh, to signal to the reader that we have either a paraphrase of that author's work or a direct quote coming up, right? So in this case, we can see by our quotation marks that we have a direct quote to follow that signal phrase or attributive tag, okay? Uh, we have one other thing here, right? You may have noticed at the very end of this sentence, we have a number in parentheses. Now this number is actually the page number the direct quote comes from. So we do need that whenever we have the page number available in parentheses at the end of the sentence. And we do this if we are summarizing, if we are paraphrasing, or directly quoting. So every single time we pull information from a source, we do need to reference the page number. All right, we can read forward a little bit into this paragraph, and we don't see any other quotation marks, but that doesn't mean that we're not taking information from the source itself. So we, we go down here to this very last sentence, and we see that we've got parentheses at the end of the sentence. And that's a cue to the reader that within that sentence, we have summarized or paraphrased material from the outside source listed. So I'll read this sentence. Uh, specifically, he writes about Trixie Lee's concern for her brother, Buffy Bob, after Buffy Bob runs away into the surrounding forest. Now, how is the reader going to know what source this comes from? Well, in parentheses, we have the author's name, the last name, right? So we can say, comes from McDonald. Uh, where does this information come from? Well, specifically, we can find this on page 83. So we include both of those pieces of information in parentheses at the end of the sentence so that the reader knows where to go and what page number specifically to find this information. All right, so everything in this paragraph cited correctly in text. Now we're going to move on to this next paragraph, and I'll read this out loud, and then we'll go through and highlight a couple of aspects. So we start with the sentence, No one had ever been mean to Trixie Wee, so she wasn't scared of anyone. Okay, we've got parentheses right here and we can see we've got the author's name in parentheses we've got the page number in parentheses we also have a period in parentheses which looks different from these other two examples right so one thing that we would want to revise straight off the bat would be to take the period and put it after our parentheses so that's a formatting issue that would need to be fixed or revised. But one other thing that we can look at in this particular example, uh, when we look at the direct quote, now nobody had ever been unkind to Trixie Wee and therefore she was not afraid of anybody. This sentence looks very similar 
No one had ever been mean to Trixie Lee, so she wasn't scared of anyone. We're using almost exact same word choice and phrasing as the original. So in this case, we would want to definitely go, go back and rephrase, reword this so that it doesn't mirror quite exactly the original source. Right? Uh, this is called patch writing, where we potentially change out a word or two, but we don't change enough. So it lo looks almost exactly like the original. Okay, so this is something that would be, need to be revised as it's a form of accidental plagiarism. We have another sentence here. Buffy Bob ran away, period, end of sentence. Next, we have a direct quote. He was gone so long that Trixie Wee began to be frightened for she was very fond of her brother. MacDonald 83, right? Now, if we look at this particular quote, we've got one good thing going for us. We've got our parentheses with the author's name and page number at the end, right? Uh, but we just have this quote hanging out. And if you remember what Stedman was talking about, we don't want to do this. This is an armadillo right here, okay? We don't want roadkill armadillo. So we're going to add an attributive tag or signal phrase. McDonald says he was gone so long. Okay, so we've added that to our quote so that it's not surprised. Here's a direct quote. Okay, so here, these are just a few key aspects of in-text citation. If you have any other questions, make sure that you ask or that you page through the rest of this PowerPoint presentation so that you can see some other examples of these concepts.